Have you ever imagined your life is a book and you are the author of that story? That's the question I asked myself when I was young. You know, in life, some people are born with obstacles and hindrances that prevent people from doing the things they wish to do. However, every person has the power within themselves to overcome such obstacles. I happen to be one of these people being born with the missing hands. And I was able to overcome such obstacles when I found the true missing link in me. When I was born, my parents were so worried about me and how tough life would be for me and how would people react to my disability. So they tried to look for ways to make my disability better. They traveled to many countries, including Saudi Arabia. They found many people willing to help, but the doctor insisted that it was impossible to attach a bionic arm or carry out any sort of plastic surgery. Why? Because my bones would not withstand any such pressure at such an early age. Wow, I was a crying baby. <laughs> So my parents decided to accept the reality and the divine will of God. And I grew up, and it was time to go to school, which made my parents more worried. So they suggested that I should go for a private school or a school for children with a learning disabilities. Why did I say learning disabilities? Because they were concerned regarding my inability to hold a pen or write without help because they knew that such situations were tough and cannot protect me. But even though they decided to put me in a public school so that I would interact with all people of all kinds and have a thicker skin to mean comments and painful stares. Who is this? <laughs> so I started school. And as my parents expected, I got all stares from my fellow mates. And that really hurt my feelings because I was, I'm just like them, a kid who wanted to play, a kid who wanted to study, a kid who wanted to do anything like the others. But alhamdulillah, my teachers were understanding and loving. So I, start, I started to mingle with everybody because I believed that I'm just like them. And the biggest surprise for everyone, including myself and my parents, that I was able to hold a pen and write without help. I didn't need to write with my legs. I didn't, I didn't need to write with a device. I didn't need for someone to write for me. I started, I reached high school, and it was time to choose between scientific or literary subjects. And I was a little bit afraid. So almost everyone advised me to go for literary. In Arabic, adabi. Uh, but one day, my mother was discussing with my, one of my teachers that I, uh, that I respect. And he told her that I have too much potential at science. And that really made me happy. Because finally, I found someone who really believes I can excel at science and possibly major in a scientific related specialization. One day I was sitting with my classmates and friends at school, sharing our plans on what to study after we finished high school. My turn came and I told them I want to become a doctor or a pharmacist. Why? Because I want to improve people's lives. I want to help people who are in pain. One student came and said to me, are you serious? Look at yourself. He raised my hand and he said, look at your fingers. You will never be able to have a job. You will never be able to do anything like us. And I felt like a slap across my face. But I felt like why did he say this? Why is it, yeah, why 
is it like weird to go for like being doctor or pharmacist? I didn't listen to him. One day, out of boredom and hopelessness, I was searching on the internet looking for people like me, whether or not they are disabled individuals who succeeded in life. And I came across a lot of successful stories. But really one story that triggered me, which talked about a woman who had a more complicated handicap compared to mine. And she became a renowned doctor, and she went beyond the expectations, even though she had a tough or com complicated disability. At that moment, I felt like all the events, from my tutor encouragement to the mean comments from my fellow mates, led me to the turning point of my life, led me to find the missing link. And guess what? It's not my missing arms, but it's the way I looked at it. So I used to look at life from a narrow and dark point of view. So I decided to put the missing link in its place and let the chain be complete. I studied harder and I worked harder in order to get a scholarship in the future. On our last day of our exams, I went to that student or that classmate and I asked him, do you still think I can't make it? And he replied with a mean face, yes. And I gave him two simple words, literally two simple words. I told him, watch me. I said, watch me, and left. Because sometimes you have to tame your, tongues, your tongue instead of saying something that you'll regret later. That time passed, and I got my results. And thankfully, I got 94 out of 100. So I felt like I'm one step ahead and I'm about to reach my dream, which is either pharmacy or, or medicine. Then I filled the paper or the list for choices and I wrote pharmacy, law, chemical engineering, business, and so on. Then the Sudanese government offered me with a law, with law speciali specialization, which really I didn't want to study at all. Never, never. <laughs> but my parents told me, don't worry. You can join a private university in Sudan. Then I, I went to the, uh, but the, the, the dean of the university wanted to meet me. So I went, to, I went to him with my aunt. He asked me many questions. What's your name? I told him, Muhammad. OK, Muhammad, why don't you study my pharmacy? I told him the same reasons. I want to make people who are in pain to feel better. I want to cure people. I want to improve their lives, and many reasons. He said, Muhammad, you know your case, right? You know your condition more than anyone. And we are concerned regarding your safety and the safety of your fellow mates. So try to look for a different major instead. At that moment, I felt like my, dreaming, my dream was falling apart. Because after I was about to reach it, boom, nothing at all. I, start, I started crying involuntarily and went outside, of, outside his office. He told my aunt, bring him back. I want to, I want to tell him something. I thought that he wanted, he wanted to tell me something to make me happy or to agree. I didn't know what to do, but I, heard, I listened to my aunt and I came back. He told me, that's what I meant. If you react to mean comments by crying, then you will never survive. And we will, we will not accept you. So go out. I didn't know what to do. I was hopeless again and weak. But. I prayed to God to help me, to give me another chance. I returned to Oman. My father told me, after, quite, after week, some weeks, he told me that 
the Ministry of Higher Education had offered me a scholarship to study pharmacy. Where? In my medical college. But you have to meet the dean again. <laughs> so this brought back the same events. I felt, I felt like the same routine will happen again. But I accepted and I said to myself, okay, let God decide what's best for me. My parents contacted with Dr. Yassin. And I'm pleased that he came just for me and to support me. Thank you, Dr. Yassin. <laughs> he accepted. Then I went to the lady in the registration office. She said, you have to do one more thing to be accepted. What was that thing? She said, you have to meet Dr. Jayashekar, who is the head of pharmacy department. And again, that, the same feeling came again. I felt like I will never be accepted. He came to me and greeted me and made me feel like I belong to a man medical college. And without question regarding my condition, without regarding my situation, he said, congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to Oman Medical College. And I was pleased and I, ha I, was, I had a heartwarming feeling that I was accepted for who I am and not be valued by my missing arms or by my physical appearance. Then, I had, like, I had a feeling of happiness for quite some time, maybe like for uh, two months more. So, I'm happy that there are some people like Dr. Yasin and Dr. Jashakar who don't judge people by their physical capability, but by their minds, by their knowledge, and by their passion. All in all, you can live the moment you desire. You can achieve whatever you want. All you need to do is first see it, then believe it, then you must train and ask your brain to execute your vision. And there is something inside of you that is creative, which is the missing link. That missing link will open all doors to your creativity. All you need to do is break the barrier and get outside the box. That's the feeling I had when I felt like everything succeeded. So you have to believe in yourself. I will never, talking about myself, I will never stop. I, bigger, I, I dream of bigger things and I will never get anything get on my way because I know I'm stronger than ever and I will never stop and I will improve myself and make myself better. And I hope everyone find that missing link because that missing link will make you go beyond the expectations. Thank you everyone.